So hello, how are you? I hope you're well. Um, it's a lovely autumnal sunny day here in Devon. In fact, it's sunnier today than I think it's been for most of the summer, actually. It's lovely and I'm just sitting looking at some feeders, uh, some new bird feeders that I got, which was a belated birthday present. And we've started, you know, it takes birds a little while before they actually start um, feeding on them, but they've, they've begun arriving, so it's lovely. I thought I'd just catch you up with what I've been doing, um, which is slow stitching and embroidery. I've nearly finished my socks. I'm just on that little bit at the toe where you're doing the um, casting off, can't think what it's called now, which makes me really tense when I'm doing it. So I haven't brought those down. Very nearly finished. And um, I've got a new pair, which I'll show you in a second, the yarn ready to cast on some more. So I've been making, this is the beginnings of a little cushion cover that I've just decided that I want to make all new cushions, so this is the first one. So this is an embroidery that I did quite a long time ago, a little lavender embroidery, and I have just begun edging it, um, sort of giving it a frame. I'm just looking at adding, because I can't help myself to add extra bits on and embellish it, and I really like the way I've just got that out the box and it's fallen, and I quite like the way that's falling, actually, I'm going to pin that on here while I'm here. Um, I'm going to pin that on there now. So yes, lots of stitching been going on and after I finish this one, which is going to take me a while, I'm just stitching this. If you're one of our Patreons, I've just, a video actually should have gone up and I've got some more uh, embroideries that I want to use and put on cushions. So Cushion time. Speaking of stitching, there's a little stitchy product that I'll tell you about later on that um, has gone into the shop today. Um, yes, we're really excited about that. I'm going to show you some of the yarns that we've just put in because we've had our first uh, actual yarn update for really quite some time. Oh, look at this. I think this is actually, it's funny, isn't it, with slow stitching, how things start to happen. I was going to put some text on this, but I think actually I'm going to add some laces instead. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's what I'm doing. That's what I love about slow stitching. I love things that just sort of happen and sort of come alive in front of your eyes. Um, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to go and stitch that now. We've just launched our brand new Enchanted Woodland edit, which we're really excited about, something that we've been planning for a long time. And we have our first set of colours and um, an exciting little stitch box, which I'll tell you about in a second. So i just take you through the colours. So this one is, uh, first of all, let me set the scene. So the Woodland Deep, where time stands still and adventures await, where creatures nestle and birds hop, where flowers bloom and butterflies flutter. So it's that kind of feeling of coming into this area of woodland where if you're quiet, you just see this life happening in front of you. And it's that kind of feeling. So this is our first colourway. This is Rose in Oak Hollow, which is like a little rose that's scrambling along sort of in the last of the summer, you know, on the on the hollow oak. And then this one is Mossy Knoll. And this is like the little um, anemones that you see peeking through moss. So this is Mossy Knoll. This one is Late Summer Blooms. So this is like the last of the flowers that you get in the woodland. Um, that lovely mossy colour and the autumn sky peeking through. This one is Woodland Brook, which I love. So this is the little brook tinkering, tinkling um, through the woodland. 
And if it's really quiet, that's all you can really hear. So that's a woodland brook. And the last one is Enchanted Clearing, which is a lovely mossy and olive greens and that lovely uh, autumnal sky that you get. So they've all, they all sort of link in with each other. They're all obviously perfect for standalone, should you wish to make socks with them or something like that, but they also all kind of work together. So they are our new Enchanted Woodland colourways and they're in the shop now. The other thing that, that we've just launched actually, um, which is going in today, is our new stitch box. So it's part of our Enchan Enchanted Woodland edit and it's called An Autumn Woodland. And in that you will get a little fabric bundle, so similar to the kind of thing you get with Selvage. Uh, a simple little pattern which will be, uh, has been designed by Christopher and you will get five of our BFL silk threads which have been hand dyed and you will have the option, so that's a little box which will come in a lovely box for you and you have the option to add on a box pouch if you want to. So they're our new Enchanted Woodland products and um, hope you love them. And it's just kind of a reflection of my love of autumn. It's my, I just think it's favourite time of the year. It's that, it's that time when it's not winter, so you've still got the lovely sunny days. Um, and for me, autumn is kind of this time, it's like back to school, new term, it's new opportunities. Somehow it feels like new beginnings for me, autumn. Almost forgot to say actually, um, there are also some little box pouches. This one with a uh, polka dot, um, green and gold, polka dot lining. And this one is with my favourite black and white polka dot lining. And they're little box pouches um, that I made. I love making these and I love using them all the time. So they're little box pouches. Those two with different one, different in, uh, interiors, and this is the little drawstring pouch, which has got little hand sewn tabs, and these have the green and gold dotty lining again. So they are in the shop now. Little drawstring. So there's no box bottom for these. Uh, they're just lovely to fit into your um, into, wow, do you know, you can use it for anything. When I went away on holiday, I had a couple of these that I took, that I put all my makeup in, and another one that I put my toiletries in, so you can use them for everything. Um, so they're part of our new Enchanted Woodland edit. So the other thing I wanted to show you is our Floral Edit Hydrangeas, which is, this is the fabric that the box pouches were made out of. This is Liberty. Tanner Lawn, absolutely love it. And this is the hydrangeas, which is, it was the hydrangeas when they're fading and when the, you know they're at the point where you can dry them. So they're all these lovely colors reflecting the hydrangea. Uh, and our new Floral Edit Minis Club, which is carnations and chrysanthemums, is in the shop now to order. So, I feel at the moment that the world is a particularly troubled place and my way of dealing with that is to have a kind of really positive thoughts and try and just have a positive energy about everything I do. It's kind of part of the reason that I make these videos, I suppose, really. And there's a, a young lady whose name is Ruby Granger, who makes videos. She's been making videos for many years now. I'll link to her underneath. Um, she's a young lady in her probably early 20s and living in the UK. And she has, I'm not going to say for her age, because that, that sounds um, deprecating, but I know I didn't have her maturity at that age. She just has this wonderful positive um, outlook on life that I find uplifting. And she made a video a short while ago about a commonplace book. So a commonplace book, which I'll talk to you about in a second, 
Um, in fact, I'll show you. I've got my, I've got some of my uh, books to show you. Actually, I'm digressing, but I'll show you. It doesn't matter what you keep them in, whether it's a small notebook that you jot things down in, or bigger ones. Look at this one. That's B and A. Haven't actually written in this one yet. There's some still. I think this is the one I'm going to write in. Through to something bigger. You'll go. It's the commonplace book is where you write down things sort of specially pertinent to you. It may be um, a favourite quote from a poem or a book or a film. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be highbrow. It can just be something that appeals to you. Um, and you write it down in kind of a collection. So you will have down, I don't know, birds, bird song might be one of them. So you might, at the top of your book, you may have bird song and anything that you read which kind of refers to birds you, that, that, that has inspired you, you might write it down. It could be anything. Ruby, quite honestly, explains this far better than I can. Um, so she has kind of inspired me. So I have kept commonplace books for a long time just because if I do read something, yes, you can underline it and you can highlight it and all those kind of things, but I think it, to have them together in one place so you can pick up a book and think, this is where my favourite quotes are. Um, what is it? You must allow me... What's the quote? I can't remember it now. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I love and admire you, something like that, Mr Darcy. Something like that. That's in there. Um, it's just things that... Um, mean something to you. Anyway, talking about the commonplace books, I thought this is my, I think I've shown you this, this is my gypsy filler embroidery part of my um, herbarium quilt. And I thought, and I love writing script, as you, if you've been watching my videos, you'll probably know that. So I thought that I'm going to do a kind of stitched version of that so that if I have a, a, a quote that I particularly love I'm actually going to stitch it and um, I'm not quite sure yet whether it will be a book or whether it will be a bigger piece or whether it will be cushions or framed I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet but yeah Ruby has inspired me to do that because it kind of fits in with just picking up my needle and thread and creating something and actually to put into onto fabric some of my favorite quotes I think it's a lovely thing to do and I think some of the other people that I love people like Richard E Grant who for me just seem like or certainly I'm sure he has dark periods but he always puts out his his positive thoughts and another one of my favorites is Nigel Slater now moving on to Nigel Slater I'm going to show you what I've just got So, oh, at this point, can I say, what I was just about to say, this, this will be in our new newsletter. Can I just say thank you so much for everybody who has so far signed up to the Snowdrop, which is our new sort of lifestyle platform that we, we're uh, still in the period of creating, in the process of creating, which um, is about sharing just in a way positivity is sharing the things that we love and this is one of them so i thought i would just quickly show you this but going back to the snowdrop we we hoped for a few people to come along we were shocked by how many of you actually signed up so thank you so much if you haven't signed up it's www.thesnowdrop.co.uk and there's somewhere there we can so up to the newsletter and well, it's not really a newsletter but we're going to basically every probably every other week it'll be a little a bit of positivity really into your inbox so this is Nigel Slater's new book so Nigel Slater is if you don't know who he is is a now I can't remember whether he describes himself as a cook who writes or a write, writer who cooks but he does both incredibly well his recipe books are just 
they're very, it's very kind of simple cooking with the best ingredients and they're, they're just my go-to. Quick plug for the Christmas Chronicles, which is also Nigel Slater, uh, because that book actually begins, although it's Christmas Chronicles, it begins at the beginning, I think it's at the beginning of November, and that's an absolutely magical book. Uh, but this is his new one called A Thousand Feasts, and he, he actually reads a little bit of this on his uh, Instagram, and he's, to hear him read it is amazing. But it's a lovely little book, and it's, look at it, look at the inside. And it's one of these books that it's just lovely to delve into. And it's basically, he's kept, it says here, for, for years, Nigel Slade has kept notebooks of curiosities and wonderings, penned while at his kitchen table, soaked in a fisherman's hut in Reykjavik, sitting calmly in a moss garden in Japan or sheltering from a blizzard in Vienna Conditori. And they're little moments in his life and it's to do with gardening and it's to do with cooking and you can see they're just little short entries and it is just the most beautiful prose I'm only a short way into it but it's one of those books that you sit down to and it's a treat you just think oh, I'm gonna read a few pages of Nigel so anyway I just wanted to share that um, I've got quite a few books actually uh, in the newsletter, which I do share with you, but this one, absolutely beautiful. I've also just lit this candle, which is uh, by Plum and Ashby, also in the newsletter. Um, it smells amazing. It's the third one I've had by them, actually. I do love a candle. There's something about autumn. You can have candles all year round, of course you can, but when it gets to autumn, it's like the law, you know, a book, a candle, some stitching, a bit of knitting. Anyway, wishing you a lovely week and do let me know what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're stitching and I'll see you soon.